Okay, so teaching, okay, speaking. So the importance of speaking. So uh, why speaking is important? It's really important, okay? Uh, because students need to speak so that they have to retrieve and use the language that they know. This helps them to remember the language. Speaking. So when you do speaking activities for the students, they will retrieve and use the language that they learn, that they know. So for example, they learn some vocabulary about like a restaurant, about food or whatever. And then you give them an activity, a speaking activity about food. So they are going to retrieve the vocabulary that they have learned and use it and apply it, practice. Okay, you know the story of practice makes perfect. Here is the role of that, of that kind of proverb. So this helps them to remember the language. So they need to retrieve and use and practice the language. And in this way, they will remember it. But if you don't do this, you don't practice, so of course it happens, you tend, people tend to forget that. So students need to have genuinely uh, communicative speaking activities to build in them the desire to speak and communicative purpose for doing so. Students shouldn't be told what language to use. Very important. That's why you noticed I was just keeping quiet. And what did I do? I was just telling you, speak English, speak English, speak English, okay? So students shouldn't be told what language to use because teachers don't want them to focus on specific language items in the same way, uh, way they do in practice activities, okay? In practice activities, maybe teachers tend to focus and tell them what to, kind of language to use. But in speaking, let them free. Okay, students just watch and we're going to have a look at the teacher's roles during uh, teaching speaking, okay? So here is the beginning of that, okay? So the, the teachers shouldn't be involved and shouldn't show, tell the students, this is what you should use, this is what, no, let them speak, let them speak. Yes, please. But when you know the uh, English, they will not use English, they will use Arabic. For example, if you give such activity to do the first year high school students, they will use Arabic. Yes. Uh, you, uh, the teacher should decide and ask the, the, the students that they should use and speak English. Yes, that's right. That's right. And we're going to see this when we're going to speak about the teacher's roles. Okay. So At the very end of my presentation, there is a section called teacher's role. What should the teacher do? Okay when the students are doing activities, speaking activities, okay? So we're going to come back to this issue and say what he or she can do, okay? Yes? Can I simplify this by uh, doing, for example, giving some uh, simple questions and uh, also with, uh, by giving the students the uh, way to ask uh, others, for example, uh, how to ask all uh, these uh, simple questions. How to ask? How to ask each other? Mm -hmm. This question. Do we ask your mothers? Because they are beginners. They don't know how to use new words and verbs. Yes, yes. Yeah, of course. Now, the instructions. Here comes the role of the instructions and the activity itself. For example, for you, you tend to be like a good level of English, so you have a lot of things to ask each other in there, right? But for the beginners, you can have one question, one question, or maybe two, three, maximum. And what are these three questions? What do you learn very beginning of English? What do you learn? What's your name? What English? What nationality are you? What do you do? What's your job? What do you eat? What are you? So, okay, you see my point? This is a place to both of you. Yeah, simple questions. So you have to give instructions. Here comes the role of instructions of the activity. Okay, so you have to do something to come up with something that is suitable for the level of the students. Do you see my point? Yes. Okay, let me go on please, let me go on because time is running, okay. Speaking activities give teachers and students a good idea about how well everyone is doing. When you do give them these activities, speaking activities, you can have an idea about the, the students, really. 
objectively and how well they are doing in learning English, each one, okay? Now, one of the most uh, uh, nicest uh, examples of uh, speaking activities that can be used for teaching speaking, okay, are games. And there are different types of games you can use for that purpose. For example, speaking activities should aim, to, uh, and this is uh, one dimension related to speaking activities in general, which is included in games, in fact, okay? In games, you have the element of relaxation, enthusiasm, fun, entertainment, Okay? No. Speaking activities should go for this direction. Speaking should aim to make students relax, enthusiastic about speaking. Okay? It's very and entertainment and have fun. Teachers, one example of, uh, of game activity for teaching speaking, teachers can dictate. Are you following? Yes. Sure? Yes. So, teachers can dictate sentences to the class and students have to complete the sentences with a word or phrase. Then, they then read their sentences out. This is one example of activity for teaching speaking. Teachers can dictate sentences to the class. Sentences, only sentences. So, it goes, it's up to the level again. Okay? So, for this case, the sentence to the class, and students have to complete the sentence with a word or phrase. So the sentence may be not missing something. So you, the students can complete the... This is one example that can be used for beginner level of students, okay? Teachers can write topics of paper and put them in a hat or bowl. You have a hat or a bowl or something, okay? Okay? And then you put papers. In these papers, they include topics. Each paper includes a topic. Students take turns to pick out a piece of paper. One student goes and picks up this paper. Next, next, next. And then have to say at least one sentence about the topic they have chosen. Okay? And this is for a beginner level. Okay? And then, uh, not pre-beginner, but pre-intermediate, elementary, pre-intermediate level. Okay? But you, you can go further. Instead of asking them to write just a sentence, or not to write, to speak a sentence, you're going to paragraph or opinion, okay? Something. Students have a dice. You know what is a dice? dice. Yes, a dice. So, and then you throw it in numbers three or two or one, whatever. Students have a dice and choose one topic for what each of the numbers one to six. The dice have one different sides. Each side, one side has number one, another has number two, another three, four, five, six. Six is the maximum. So, uh, choose one topic for each of the numbers one, six. One student throws the dice and has to speak one or two sentences about the topic for the number that occurs. So, for example, topic number two, it is pollution or whatever, technology or whatever. Now, then somebody throws the dice and then, in fact, it shows number two. So, the students, one student has to speak one sentence or two about that topic. It's another example of, okay, uh, activity for teaching speaking. Teachers can choose two or three students. They have to construct an instant letter to a writer or thinker or artist or celebrity of their choice. They have to Construct a letter. You know what is a letter? Letter, dear, okay? So they have to construct that letter to somebody famous, okay? No, like a writer, thinker, art, celebrity of their choice. But they have to speak their letter in some, some kind of special way. But they have, not like having one student speaking the whole letter, but the group will speak the letter. He says, dear, X, I, yam, glad, to, right. And then it goes on like this to make a letter for this celebrity or whatever. So, but they have to speak their letter, one student, one word at a time. One student, one word at a time. Dear, X, I, am glad, okay? One student, one word at a time. When they have finished, their letter, three other students have to reply in the same way. 
Okay, so it goes on to the reply for the letter. Okay, another example of activity for teaching speaking. Another uh, example of activity for teaching speaking, which is interviews. Okay, interviews can be used to practice specific language items, but can also be used to use them for more communicative speaking activities. An example of well, there are many ways how you can do interviews, okay? Now, here's one, it is referred to as the hot seat. So, the interview, you know the interview? You have one body, uh, somebody, and then asking questions, and then others, or maybe an audience asking questions, and one is uh, answering, okay? So, here's one example of activity for interview, like a hot seat, okay? Students have to prepare short statements, first of all, they have to prepare short statements about what they did last weekend or their favorite sport or habit. Okay? They have to prepare short statements. One student now sits in the hot seat and delivers a statement. The others ask as many questions as they can think about it. So, when they work together, okay, so look. They make short statements about something that they did last weekend or whatever. Now, one of them is going to come here, for example, like what I'm doing. And then I give a statement. So I went, we went to like this. And then they are going to ask, okay, questions related to that, okay? Ask them to the person who is sitting in the hot seat. When the student runs out of things to say, someone else goes to the hot seat. So when I am done, I have nothing on, to add on that, on what we have agreed on when we were doing the work together. So I am done, I go, I have a seat and then another one. And then it goes on the story like this, okay? Another example is called the interview the picture. Interview the picture, okay? Interview the picture. Students look at a picture which shows several people. Students look at a picture which shows several people. They have to write questions for people in it. For example, the picture shows like uh, two people, so maybe Hollywood stars or singers or whatever. And then they have to write the students or the audience, they have to write, okay, questions for the people in it. Several students come to the front and pretend to be the people in the picture. Now, if you have in the picture two, the two come here. And then the other students, the rest of the class, ask their questions and the students at the front have to imagine how the characters might be. Okay, so you see the kind of thing going on? Like interviewing the picture. And here there is some kind of imagination going on, okay? Discussions. Discussions is another way for uh, doing speaking activities, okay? When discussions, this is something that we have to be careful about, well organized. When discussions are well organized, they are very likely to be highly motivating and successful. You know what happens in Al Jazeera from time to time? <laughs> yes? So what do you learn when it's like that? You learn nothing, okay? But when it is well organized and you have people uh, uh, participating in an organized way and speaking democratically and so on, so on. It's more interesting and you learn from it, okay? So this is something you have to bear in mind if you want to do discussions, okay? You know, especially nowadays. These days, the discussions maybe tend to be really heated, okay? Okay, okay, let's focus about politics. I'm just referring here to this. I'm referring to this idea, to this dimension here, okay? So therefore, if you want to do discussions, you have to be careful as a teacher about organizing them, okay? Like what I'm doing now. She wants to intervene and continue the story. I have to make it organized. Not okay, just organize my work. Buzz groups. So there are, again, like interviews. You have different ways how you can, to do in, you can do the interviews. You can also do the discussions in different ways. Buzz groups. Students can be put into buzz groups where they can quickly discuss anything from what they are going to read about to what they want to do next. Buzz groups are normal events in the life of a classroom. So 
to group here, group here, group here, group here, group here, and they discuss something about what they read, what they, whatever, okay? And then, when, you know, when you have a group discussing here, another group discussing here, you know? It's like a buzz, okay? So that's called buzz groups, okay? But you have to be careful that, especially when you are going to teach, okay? Uh, maybe new teachers feel like strange when they see the students making noise and speaking. And, oh, what's going on? No, shut up. Sit down. No, these past groups are normal events in the life of a classroom. Okay? Discussions. Again, another way of doing uh, discussion is prompt cards. Cards is, you know, cards like uh, you have seen in the video. The guy was presenting like cards, okay? Prompt cards, okay? Cards, the prompt discussion, okay? Students can be given prompt cards, each which with a point of view about a topic. Uh, I have one prompt card here about uh, globalization is good. Another one, globalization is bad. Drugs are good. Drugs are bad. Drugs are excellent, okay? And then you have these prompt cards and then you give them, okay? Then students are given time to think about what they can say to support the opinions on their cards before starting the discussion. So you give cards, okay, and then they have to give their opinions about the cards. Discussions, again, we can have like formal debates, okay, like, a, you know, imitating what happens in Al Jazeera and CNN and all those channels. Okay, students can be given an idea for a debate. Teachers divide the class into groups. Okay. One for the idea, okay, and one against. One group has got an idea, globalization is good, another one, globalization is bad. One group, drugs are good, another group, drugs are excellent, okay, and so on. Each group then chooses someone to speak first. Not everybody is going to speak, so you, when they discuss together, they can discuss together and pass, okay. But when they are going to report, one spokesman or woman, and then is going to speak. So each group then chooses one, someone to speak first and someone to speak second. The others from uh, both groups are the audience. So when these spokesmen or women are speaking, so the others are audience, okay? The debate sequence is team A, speaker one, followed by team B, speaker, okay? Then the audience can speak and ask questions, then so it goes on the story like this. So you have team one, one speaker from team one, and then finishes. You move on to uh, group two, speaker another one, and then it goes on. And then you go on like this, and then the audience asks questions. So who won the debate? This is the, okay, who is going to win the debate? Okay, but the debate's uh, using arguments. That's why in the very beginning, what do you do? You give them chance to discuss, to prepare the opinions and arguments. When the spokesman comes here, or spokeswoman comes here, so knows the arguments and going to use the arguments and passing, moving, moving on and on. The topic of uh, those, this debate should be debatable. For example, a teacher gives a student uh, a topic which is concerned with accidents, for example, and no one would like to talk about accidents, and another teacher gave a student a topic which is concerned with, would you like, for example, would you like to accept, to accept that? Women take control of our country. That that touches the beliefs of our students, and each one desires to give his own opinion. So that's why it's called debate here. It's called what? Discussion, and it's called debate. And what do we mean by debate? Debate is against, for, or against. Okay, and arguments. Okay. So of course you have to choose something really heated. Okay, really heated debate topic. Okay. Yeah, in order to make the things uh, really hot, okay, dynamic. Yes. Yeah, the one that I uh, took out from the Facebook group. <laughs> yes, you because I, what I meant now, you remind me of another thing. I have to come back to it later if I have the time. Is the transcripts, okay? That's what I meant from that, okay? okay. Let me move on because time is running. So panel discussions. Another way of doing discussions is to do like what we call panel discussions, okay? Teachers can set up a panel discussion on just any topic. They can also replicate the kinds of contemporary issue panel discussions that are common on television in most countries. 
Students may feel easier if we give them roles to hide behind so that they are not judged on their own opinions. So you like give them, like they're going to do simulation or role play for any kind of famous TV program that you know, like Tiaji al Muhakis. Now one is going to be Faisal Qasim, another one is going to play the role of, uh, I don't know, X and Y. Okay, we should know neutral, okay? So, and then they are going to hide in these roles. Because usually people, when they are in their roles, okay, they tend to be discreet. And not. But when you give them this, so that's the, that's the point here. Students may feel easier if we give them roles to hide behind so that they are not judged on their own opinions, okay? Uh, telling stories. Storytelling is also good for speaking, okay? Because it encourages students to use a lot of language. Because we tell stories all the time in real life when you are speaking in a cafe or at family or whatever. So oh, many times this is one of our habits, okay? So using, uh, talking about stories, okay? Telling stories. So why not use this in the classroom, okay? One way of doing that is using what we call reconstructing a story, okay? Students are put into six groups. Each group is given one or two of a series of pictures that tell a story, DVD 10, which we're going to see today, inshallah. After studying the pictures, teachers can take the, take the pictures away, and then the students for, for new groups of six form, you have there another mistake, form new groups of six. Each of the new groups has one student from each of the other regional groups. And what is the purpose? They have to tell each other what was in their pictures and try to work out a story that connects them all, okay? Then compare stories after they finish. So what is this, to summarize all this, so you have groups, okay? And then you give them pictures, and then they have to reconstruct, that's why it is called reconstructing a story, okay? We're going to see a video. String things together. Teachers can give students pictures of any four items and ask them to work out a story which connects them. Okay? You know, like cartoons. Okay? You can bring some, you know, cartoons. They are also do, done in the form of strings. First event, second event, third event. Okay? Then you can do something like that and technology can help you in this. You have many websites for creating these kinds of things. You can print them and then uh, bring them for the students whereby they have to uh, string things together, okay? In the form of speaking, okay? Not string things like, uh, you know, uh, you know, gluing uh, things and so on, using the glue. No, speaking, in terms of speaking. So in the first event, what happens? Second event, what happens? And so on. What happens next? Teachers can show the class a film clip, video, and stop it halfway through. And then, students have to imagine what happens next. Tell it, speak it. Okay? When they have made their suggestion to the class, teachers show them the whole video to see if they were right. It's one way of involving the students as well for speaking. Taking time away. Uh, uh, let's move uh, quickly for this one. Uh, you're going to read this later on in the video. Okay, I want to move on. Truth and lies, it's another example for storytelling. Another example of uh, discussion or uh, speaking is what you do, for example, at university, making presentations, okay, oral presentations. Some things you have to be careful about in here. When students make oral presentations, teachers should give them time to prepare when they are going to, what they are going to say. If teachers want oral presentation to be successful, they need to find tasks to for the students who are listening to the presentation. Now the students do the presentations, give them time to prepare it and so on, but the other students should also have given task. What do you understand from the presentation? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Okay? In order to involve them, okay? Uh, another thing you have to remember is a simulation and a role play. What do we mean by simulations? Teachers give the students a chance to rehearse real life encounters. Okay? For instance, teachers can move the classroom furniture in order to present a station office with a ticket window because they are going to do like uh, acting like uh, they are in a, in, a, in a station office and they want a ticket or something. So you have to prepare the, 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 the place for this kind of uh, thing. 
Students simulate an exchange between a passenger and a travel clerk. Simulation, okay? One is the passenger coming to the station agency or office, and then uh, I want a ticket, can you give me a ticket? Where are you going? I'm going to this, what time would you like to leave? Uh, and so on. Would you like to class A, class whatever? So kind of uh, dialogue to take place. So they need to be given roles, okay? So in simulations or role plays, so they get a role. For instance, student A, the passenger, can be given the following role card. You give it to the students. It says, the, the card says this, you want to buy a ticket to Boston, you are very nervous, and you are in a great hurry because the police are chasing you. So you give it to the student who is going to play this role of the passenger. Now you give the student to be the other card. What does it say, the other card? You don't like your job, and you hate it. When passengers start trying to make you do everything in a hurry, okay, so you know, in order to make a certain kind of clash, conflict between the two. So then what happens, these role players need time and considerable preparation, and then students can role play TV programs, parties, and United, uh, nations, different other things, okay, you can give them other stories to, to play. Teachers speaking uh, roles in speaking activities. There are a few, okay? So first, they, can, they often need to be prompters, okay? Pushing students forward, suggesting things they might say next and helping them out of difficulties. Because you know, especially some students who tend to be timid, uh, uh, introvert, oh, go on, yes, yeah, that's good, yeah, what do you need? And you give them words. What they need, yeah, you, yeah, that's the prompter, prompt to prompt, okay, to keep encouraging the students. Teachers may need to keep on encouraging them to speak English rather than using their first language, okay, coming to the question you have raised. Teachers sometimes might decide to take part in the activity as a participant. This is another role that can take place as well in order to, okay, be to. We're going to see why. Why the teacher sometimes can be a participant himself or herself. This will allow them to keep the conversation going from within. Okay? Because some groups, maybe the conversation is not going well. So, when they see the teacher, oh, let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. So, they will go on uh, speaking. However, teachers need to be sure that they don't dominate the activity. Very important. They don't need to dominate the activity. At the end of the speaking activity, teachers need to give feedback. At the end, feedback. They need to show what errors may or may not have occurred. They also need to tell students what was successful. They need to comment on the speaking activity. Okay? So, the same reference again. Okay? Yes. What, what do you suggest? What do you suggest? Okay. Much better. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. You what do I say at the very beginning? Look, Mr. Uh, critic <laughs> critical person. <laughs> okay? <laughs> what do I say here? Teachers often need to be prompters, pushing students forward, suggesting things they might say next, and helping them out of difficulties. Okay? Teachers may need to keep on encouraging them to speak in English rather than using English. Okay? Sometimes decide to take part in the activity as participants. This will allow them to keep the conversation going on from within. However, teachers need to be sure that they don't dominate the activity. So, it's like uh, going from good to, okay? At the end of speaking, teachers need to give feedback. They need to show what errors may or not have occurred course after giving the compliments and good and excellent and all that kind of thing 
do you need to stop at uh, some errors, not all the errors, okay? And they also need to uh, tell someone what was successful in general. They need to comment on the speaking activity, okay? Take it from the very beginning. Take it from the very beginning. Yes. That's a very vast domain, error correction, okay? You have to be diplomatic about error correction. You don't have to correct all the time, okay? Yeah. Yes, yes. You have to be careful. You have to be extremely diplomatic and careful about that, okay? And uh, maybe what you can do is focus at the very end. You can focus and stop at the most common errors. Many students have done the same mistake many times. Yeah, this is one example that you have to. But forget about the others, okay? That are not very. Common, okay? Another thing of doing that is, for example, uh, the student makes a mistake. He said, for example, I, uh, I go. Ah, uh, oh, you went to the, as a teacher? Casting. Yes, okay, yeah. Another way of correcting the student's mistake is that a teacher uh, can get the mistakes of students till the end of the session. Then he makes correcting, correcting mistakes at last session. They yes. Students will participate and each one of them will recognize his mistake. Yes. Without okay. Single student, yes, that's right, that's good. You have to be diplomatic, okay, yeah? It's a very large uh, area, okay? But those are some of the uh, tips that we can take into account in here. Yes? Any other points? Good. So in the Facebook group, I'm going to uh, post some uh, activities for you to do at home, okay, as a revision for both listening and speaking, okay? So thank you very much.